Hello, hi, welcome. Hello, my gems. How are you today? Thank you for clicking on my video. We're going to go ahead and talk about awareness uh, for ovarian cancer. Yes, uh, this is the month of September and ovarian cancer month. So uh, each month I try to I upload um, awareness videos, just kind of talk about symptoms and treatments on the awareness of that month. So I'm glad that you clicked on my video. For those who are new to my channel, please subscribe, the notification bell, and like my videos for my efforts. Um, they, these are just free lessons. It's free for you to subscribe. It doesn't cost you a thing, and it's just a thank you to me and uh, having to hear what I have to say and um, not what I have to say, but just giving you a more in-depth research on ovarian cancer and things that you were probably not aware of if you're a female or even if you're a male and you just have a concern for a family member, you know, this would be a good um, a good video for you, for you to watch um, to kind of give you specifics and ideas and um, just a little rundown of ovarian cancer. Um, I do, I can relate with ovarian cancer. I don't have it myself, but um, I can say that my grandmother on my mother's side, she had ovarian cancer and she passed away of that. So it's a very serious, so it, it runs in my family. Um, I get myself checked, but not as often as I should, as often as I believe that you know, I'm gonna tell me right now when I research right now and uh, talk to you more about ovarian cancer, how often you're supposed to, you know, uh, get that checked out. So first of all, what I, as I was saying, I just wanted to give you a little rundown on a medical diagnosis on ovarian cancer. Um, ovarian cancer often um, has no symptoms in the early stages. Later stages are associated with symptoms, but they can be non-specific, such as loss of appetite and weight loss. So um, most people, most females, um, may start to sense uh, loss of appetite and weight loss. Um, I have been sensing that, but I don't believe I have ovarian cancer. Um, otherwise, the doctors probably would have already figured it out, I think. Um, we'll find out and see what more further investigation investigating they need to do, like the doctors to diagnose that you have ovarian cancer. Because a lot of these symptoms that I'm going to talk to you about, I've been experiencing. Like, for example, for, ex for example, for example, um, ovarian cancer can have no symptoms, but people may experience pain areas, like in the abdomen or pelvis. Um, as I was saying, in the gastrointestinal area, you'll be experiencing bloating, changes in bowel habits, digestion, or nausea. In the past month or so, I've been experiencing all these symptoms. Um, in the abdominal area, you'll have like abdominal fullness, fluid in the abdomen, or lump in the abdomen. Um, sometimes I feel like I have a lump in the abdomen. Um, I do feel like my abdomen feels like it's more fuller. I sometimes start to feel like it's swollen. I'm not sure if it's fluid in the abdomen. I don't know how that feels like, but I, if it feels like cramps or like you're cramping in your abdominal area, I mean, that's what I'm experiencing. Now for the whole body, uh, cancer related fatigue or loss of appetite. Um, I have been experiencing a lot of fatigue um, and loss of appetite. Okay, so it's starting to kind of like, not worry me, but I'm just kind of like just getting an idea. Um, so weight loss is a common thing for ovarian cancer. So we have to consult with the doctor for more medical advice. Now I do want to go into a slideshow on ovarian cancer on WebMD. Um, Pulling up now, sorry. Okay, it gives you a slideshow of the ovarian cancer. Since this is relating to uh, a woman's female organs um, in the area, private area, um, I do not want to show the diagram here, but it's asking the question what is ovarian cancer? Current research suggests this cancer begins in the fallopian tubes and moves to the ovaries. 
Okay, so as I was saying, it begins in fallopian tubes and moves to the ovaries. So that's where it begins, in the fallopian tubes. And it moves to your ovaries. The twin organs that produce a woman's eggs and the main source of the female hormones, estrogen and progesterone. Treatments for ovarian cancer have become more effective in recent years with the best result seen when the disease is found early. And the reason why I pause with progesterone is because I've been having like every month before I start my period, I always have like um, rashes that appear, like dermatitis that appears, and it just goes away after my, after my period begins. And after the second day, my dermatitis starts to disappear as well. So it disappears with you know, with my period as it goes along. So, um, so that's something to look into. I think I need to make me, I think I need to make an appointment. Okay. Risk factors, family history. Um, a woman's, Odds of developing ovarian cancer are higher if a close relative has had cancer of the ovaries, breast, or colon. Researchers believe that inherited genetic changes account for 10% of ovarian cancer. This includes the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene mutations, which are, like, are linked to breast cancer. Women with a strong family history should talk with a doctor to see whether Closer medical follow-up could be helpful. Um, I'm going to share with you guys, but I'm going to get a mammogram done. So that's going to let me know if I have any cancer in my breast area. You know, it's going to give me, <clears throat> it's going to let me know if I'm okay in the breast area with cancer. Uh, risk factor ages. The strongest risk factor for ovarian cancer is age. Hmm. It's most likely to develop after a woman goes through menopause. Using postmenopausal hormone therapy may increase the risk. The link seems strongest in women who take estrogen without progesterone for at least five to 10 years. Doctors are not certain whether taking a combination of estrogen and progesterone boosts the risk as well. Okay, risk factors and obesity. Oh my goodness, that's why y'all need to y'all need to do my diet plan. Um, y'all need to go and y'all need to watch my video uh, and follow my diet plan program. So, obese women have a higher risk of getting ovarian cancer than other women, and the death rates for ovarian cancer are higher for obese women too, compared with non-obese women. The heaviest women appear to have the greatest risk. Ovarian cancer screening tests. There is no easy or reliable way to test for ovarian cancer if a woman has no symptoms. However, there are two ways to screen for ovarian cancer during a routine gynecologic exam. One is a blood test for elevated levels of a protein called CA125. The other is an ultrasound of, of the ovaries. Unfortunately, neither technique has been shown to save lives when used in women of average risk. For this reason, screening is only recommended for women with strong risk factors. Um, diagnosing ovarian cancer imaging tests, such as ultrasound or CT scans seen here. I'm gonna show you the diagram of this ultrasound and CT scan. Now can you see that? I'm gonna show you. I'm able to see show you all that. So uh, can help reveal an ovarian mass, but these scans can't determine whether the abnormality is cancer. If cancer is suspected, the next step is usually surgery to remove suspicious tissues. A sample is. So I was saying before my camera cuts off because this is, the battery is dying. It says, a sample is then sent to the lab for further examination. This is called a biopsy. Well, we're almost done, we're almost done. Uh, stages of ovarian cancer. 
The initial surgery for ovarian cancer also helps determine how far the cancer has spread, described, the, described by the following stages. Stage one, confined to one or both ovaries. Stage two, spread to the uterus or other nearby organs. Stage three, spread to the lymph nodes or abdominal lining. Stage four, spread to distant organs such as the lungs or liver. Okay, now that's getting pretty far. Once it starts to reach the organs, it's, it's bad. That's bad. Lungs or liver. My goodness. I'm having a lot of like sinus issues, so lungs related. You know where I feel like I get like start heavy breathing. Okay, I better not be a high, I'm, I'm not going to be a hypochondriac. I'm not going to say, okay, I have ovarian cancer. No, but I am going to get take precautionary measures. And here's another diagram of stages of the ovarian cancer on the ovaries. Um, yeah, and the fallopian tube here that you can see in the diagram here. Okay, so I think this is the ovary and this is fallopian tube. Okay, well, I think I clicked on the next one, which is the types of ovarian cancer. The vast majority of ovarian cancers are epithelial ovarian carcinomas. These are malignant tumors that form from cells on the surface of the ovary. Some epithelial tumors are not clearly cancerous. These are known as tumors of low malignant potential, LMP. LMP tumors grow more slowly and are less dangerous than other forms of ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer survival rates. Ovarian cancer can be a frightening diagnosis. Okay, we're almost there, we're halfway through. Okay, so ovarian cancer can be frightening diagnosis with five-year relative survival rates that range from 93 to 19%. 19% for epithelial ovarian cancer. Depending on the stage when the cancer was found for LMP tumors, the five-year relative survival rates range from 97 to 89%. Ovarian cancer surgery. Surgery is used to diagnose ovarian cancer and determine its stage, but it is also the first phase of treatment. The goal is to remove as much of the cancer as possible. This may include a single ovary and nearby tissue in stage one. In more advanced stages, it may be necessary to remove both ovaries along with the uterus and surrounding tissues. Chemotherapy. In all the stages of ovarian cancer, chemotherapy is usually given after surgery. This phase of treatment uses drugs to target and kill any remaining cancer in the body. The drugs may be given by mouth through an IV or directly into the belly, intraperitoneal chemotherapy. Women with LMP tumors usually don't need chemo unless the tumors grow back after surgery. Uh, targeted therapies. Uh, researchers are working on therapies <clears throat> that target the way ovarian cancer grows. A process called angiogenesis, angiogenesis involves the, form, the formation of new blood vessels to feed tumors. A drug called Avastin blocks this process causing tumors to shrink or stop growing, seen in the illustration here. So this is a vest in trying to stop the growth in the blood vessels. If y'all can see that. There it is right there. That's how it looks under the microscope. Okay, that's in the blood vessel. Um, after treatment, early menopause. When women have both ovaries removed, they can no longer produce their own estrogen. This triggers menopause. No matter how young the patient, the drop in hormone levels can also raise the risk of certain medical conditions, including osteoporosis. It's vital that women have regular follow-up care after being treated for ovarian cancer. After treatment, moving on, women may find that it takes a long time for their energy to return after treatments. And Sorry, my camera is uh, it's turning off because the battery is really low. So uh, let me just read a little faster. Women may find that it takes a long time for their energy to return after their treatments end. Fatigue is a very common problem after treatment. Fatigue is a very long problem after treatment for cancer. Beginning 
A gentle exercise program is one of the most effective ways to restore energy and improve emotional well-being. Check with your health care team to determine which activities are right for you. Okay, risk reduce your pregnancy. Women who have biological children are less likely to get ovarian cancer than women who have no, never given birth. The risk appears to decrease with every pregnancy and breastfeeding may offer added protection. Well, I have no kids and I'm already 40. So I don't want to be a hypochondriac, but uh, that worries me. Okay, so risk reducer, the pill. Ovarian cancer is also less common in women who have taken birth control pills. I never taken birth control. I only take it, only take it like one. I only take, I only took it once, and it was just like the round, like it came in a round um, thingy. It was in a round compact, and I only took it for like one month, and that was it. So I really, really never had like a full blown birth control pill regimen. So I never been on birth. I, I could, I could say I never been like on birth control since then i mean i've only tried it like maybe one or two months i think that's it and i was young i was like maybe 17. so uh women who have used the pill for at least five years have about half the risk of women who never took the pill like pregnancy birth control pills prevent ovulation some researchers think ovulating less often may protect against ovarian cancer i'm ovulating all the time Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Risk reducer tubule ligation. Getting your tubes tied, formerly known as tubule ligation, may offer some protection against ovarian cancer. The same goes for having a hysterectomy, removing the uterus. Well, here's a picture of it. Let's see. Uh, this is the fallopian tube, the ovary, and uh, where they snip it. Oh, can you see that? Where they snip the scissors? That's where they, they snip it. So, uh, is where you get your tubes tied. Okay, the next one. Risk reducer, removing the ovaries. For women with genetic mutations that put them at high risk for ovarian cancer, removing the ovaries is an option. <laughs> this can also be considered in women over 40 getting a hysterectomy. I'm about to be 40. About to be 40. Risk, okay. Risk reduce your low-fat diet. While there is no def definitive diet to prevent ovarian cancer, there is evidence that what you eat can make a difference. In one recent study, women who stuck to a low fat diet for at least four years were less likely to develop ovarian cancer. Some researchers report the cancer is also less common in women who eat a lot of vegetables, but were, but more studies are needed. Okay. This is the last part because I'm already on red on my battery. Um, I think that's it. That's the end. Cause it's switched over to guide to appendix cancer. So I think that's all I have to say on ovarian cancer. Yeah. So appendix is another good um, topic to talk about. But I want to go ahead and end this video now before my, my camera cuts off and I really can't turn it back on. So love you gems. Those who haven't subscribed, subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel. Just a thank you to me in my efforts and giving you all the information that that I give you on my videos that you may need or or may feel like you know it's it's something that you weren't aware of or something you know just uh it's just free sessions you know for you so subscribe it doesn't hurt doesn't cost a thing um like my video for my efforts and then I hit the notification bell so you can get another upload all right well I love you gems and I'll see you soon very very soon bye I wish this wasn't so short, but my battery is going to die off in any any second here, I think, I believe. Okay, so I'll see you in my next video. But please spread the word along. Twitter, social media, Twitter, Instagram, friends, family. Please just have them subscribe to my channel. If that, you know, even, even if it's a pity subscribe, just do it. I really need to build my subscriber base. Um, and I need some followers on YouTube.